yeah, this is all sorts of stuff that we have bought to take care of my grandson. Hopefully, it will be used someday. But anyway, the thing is that Social Security in Sweden has taken my grandchild. And today we have received a decision that they will not be suggesting me as a caretaker for my grandchild and it will be given to strangers who don't even talk my native language. And my grandchild is my only heir and as my two daughters are ill, both, so probably I will never have another grandchild. So this is a very sad day for me because I have been preparing to take care of him for a long time. So I want to leave a record over what happened and uh, how we were treated and what's going on in Swedish social, social security matriarchy who decides who can have their children to raise and who can't. It's a very violent system that has to be analyzed and which I had my personal experience of now and thanks God so I had it together with Chris who has helped me with this experience here you are Chris shall we go and uh, sit down in the kitchen so so it's a bit more light there time with the, the baby on Thursday it was, yeah? When we had a couple of hours with him here and uh, <coughs> before, baby is soon one and a half months and uh, it was taken away from my daughter at birth, one and a half hour after delivery, and I have video filmed all, all of it, both um, the period after he came and how they took away from her. And we had applied long time before the birth that we would take care of the little baby because my daughter is. Uh, having psychiatric disease and uh, <clears throat> we have quite a story to tell and share how we were treated not to get the baby and um, obviously it was already in May on the fifth month of her pregnancy when we were taking her to specialists and helping her with her pregnancy and taking care of my daughter every day, all the time, sort of, to feed her, to, to dress her well so the baby would grow up properly. And already then in May we said that we would take care of the baby if she would, my daughter wouldn't get better. And uh, eventually, after many more times uh, of visits, in the middle of July, we made social security services from the local community. And the investigator there directly told me that 
there was no chance that I would be able to get the baby at the delivery to take care of it. And I asked, how comes there is more than two months left uh, until the end of September when the delivery was planned? And she said, oh, um, you have to get investigated if you are a proper person. And you have to go courses to become this uh, family urgency house, as they call it. So I directly got looking around, where are these urgency courses, where could I go then? And it was not that easy to get to them, it was one, so one, but in the end, when it all came around, two months later, they, we were told that we don't, know, no, don't even have to go to those emergency courses. It was not necessary, it was a lie. And uh, <clears throat> also the fact is that the investigation that we had to go for them to dawn on us if we are proper people was delayed so much that we couldn't practically be examined until the delivery. So they started it two weeks before delivery instead of directly after uh, when the two months will be applied. Nevertheless, they started the investigation. Uh, we have been to, to meetings with them and they have been in our apartments. And um, it was sort of not much they could find, no flaws. We, we had good economy, we had no records of not paying dues and we had um, proper reputation and the references. There were first we had to give four references, and then we gave additional references uh, as they wanted more. But everybody was saying only good things about us. But uh, <coughs> that that wasn't enough either. Maybe you could tell a bit now, so it gets more fun. Yes. Well, this was a tremendously invasive procedure, all of this. As far as I was concerned, I had to sit through three-hour, no, four-hour interview with various people from the social services in, in the local community here. And they asked extraordinarily deep questions about my life. You know, down to my, my, my personal habits and my children and my wife and my ex-wife and everything that I've done in my life, my childhood, my parents, my grandparents. An enormous in-depth invest, in, in investigation of my qualities. Of course, I mean, I have a lot of children. I have uh, seven children. I have lots of grandchildren. All of them are happy. I brought them up quite happily. I had uh, an investigation through various um, referees that they contacted, people who spoke on my behalf and said how good I was with children and all this sort of thing. And at the end of all of this, and I have to say that it was extremely invasive and very embarrassing and verging on, 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 on uh, cruel, I have to say. Why, why cruel? Uh, well, cr cruel because it was not necessary, in my opinion, to, to attack me indirectly in, in the way that they did, to, to, to have this sort of Gestapo interrogation about the way in which I was. What do you mean, Gestapo interrogation? Well, it was, it was. I mean, I'd been through uh, a number of court cases. I'd been in, uh, interrogated in court cases through depositions. And this was much more... Personal. Uh, yes, personal and, and, and invasive. But anyway, this is about no, the baby. I don't think it, this I is don't not think, about your expert. I don't think so. It was, I think it was unnecessary. Anyway, this is not the point. The point is they learned everything there was to know about me. I don't think there was anything that they didn't learn about me that there is to know. But at the end of all of this, when the decision came... But what was interesting that was with no that, baby. what was invasive was all those sexual questions. Well, there were all of those things. I mean, I well, had, enormous I, amount of sexual of course, questions. I mean, they were, they, were, they were pruriently interested in my sex life. Extraordinary. 
What that would have to do with the baby is entirely beyond me. That, that I found was really... And I find it really rather kinky. It's like these, these people, you know, in my opinion, I mean, I've met a lot of people. In my opinion, these people were not... They were not, they were not psychiatrically stable. I don't have to say it. But I don't people think people or the the, 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 or the, the these social services people that, in, that that talk to me. I don't I don't think they were all there. I think those people themselves should be investigated. Their their their, their, their whole conversation and the whole tendency of what it was they were saying made me suspect that they were actually not very nice people. You know that they had all sorts of psychological flaws themselves. Anyway, whatever it was, they ended up by saying that we were not suitable to be to bring up this child now now this is very interesting because in england and in fact in you know not only in england but in all societies it's generally accepted that the grandparents if there should be a problem with where the children where the baby should be brought up the first person you look to is the family because the family is a blood connection to the child to, to the baby and babies are brought up best by by the blood connection but these people seem to imagine and in fact they said this that the baby is best brought up by somebody who believes the same social system that they believe in. And this is ultimately what it came down to. When, when they discussed with us the reasons why they decided that we were not suitable to bring up this child. Which was today. It, it was actually about the fact that we didn't agree with the way in which they saw the world. We had a different way of seeing the world. And I find that quite extraordinary. Because actually, Ditter is the, is the child's grand, grandmother and this is a, a Latvian society that she comes from, and the fact that she has a different way of seeing the world to the Swedish way of seeing the world, surely has to be uh, uh, permitted. This is a human right. This is the right of the family. As far as I'm concerned, what I, what I was mainly uh, angry about, ultimately, was that they just told a pack of lies. When they showed us a piece of paper that said that their decision was this and that, they wrote, they wrote I'll bring this it. decision that I'd said things that I'd never said. They just made this stuff up. They just made it up. Anyway, so what can we say about all of this? We can say that it's a gross abuse of, of democratic process. We can say that because they told us that there was no way in which we could appeal against this decision, it was a sort of diktat, we can say that there was no democratic involvement here. There is no... There is absolutely no. This is the piece of paper they gave us. Hang on, let me finish. To say. And this is the little paper they can get away with. There is no decision that is made in any Western democracy that I know that cannot be appealed. Because after all, you know, if you can't appeal a decision, then some little kind of tin pot dictator who happens to have some position in some in some bureaucratic authority, just like these people can say anything they like. And you can't go to an independent tribunal and say, look, excuse me, but they've said this and they've said this and they've said this, and it's just not true. In fact, it is actually factually wrong. Anyway, this is the, really the point. That is the point, yeah. We got there. Oh, we don't think you are sort of... We will not recommend you to be the, the caregivers for your grandchild. Huh? And uh, two women who investigated us and uh, when I, when I, the only thing they said why was that the approximately unbelievable main point is that they don't believe that we would be able, mainly me, would be able to communicate with social security, with um, kindergarten, with psych uh, psychiatric uh, child's help, with uh, hospitals and uh, what is that system called in English? Don't know what system. Health uh, health uh, providers, healthcare providers. Yeah. And school. So so and this is and when I then after that ask them, can you give one example on which you base this uh, terrible accusation? In practice, practi practically, because I have my two daughters who are 26 and 24, which have been, I have never had problems with any of these sort of institutions. They have needed a lot of help because they are having both health issues. They are handicapped. 
uh, one of them has uh, had uh, uh, a tumor under the brain why I came to Sweden and, and operated her here which I fixed for her to come to Latvia to get a high class operation here which I fixed okay I brought her the whole way from Latvia and fixed her best class health care and raised up her she's a marvelous uh, woman now nevertheless uh, and my other daughter who has uh, psychiatric trouble I have rescued from, from unbelievable uh, and she finished her school brilliantly and she got into high school and all, all I, I have only record of good connections with all of these instances and when I asked them, can you give one example when I have had bad connections with these instances, why you write like that? They both said, no, we don't have it. We can't give one example. And how can you then write such a decision? Oh, we just have a general feeling that it would be so. And this is what they get away with. They take your grandchild and with, with, with these lies and then they complained that we were recording the, these, these investigation hours that they did on us. Yes, yeah, so well we expected them to do something like this. So and I imagine, imagine the situation when you have total no rights, you cannot appeal to their decision, and you can't even audio record what's going on. Because I asked them to audio record it, but they refused to do it. Okay? And... Uh, <clears throat> Where, are, where do we have the right then? They just put down what they want to put down into their notice. In books. fact, they put down things that didn't happen. So they say that we say things that actually we didn't say. And luckily we have an audio recording that shows that that isn't true. Unfortunately, we don't have all of it because our technology didn't work sufficiently. But this is the point. They, everything they do should be audio taped. Otherwise, they are just giving their sort of perception of reality and taking our right. children. That's right. yeah. But they say that they don't like our perception of reality and there is enough for them to say, we don't love your like your perception of reality, that's why we take your baby. And there is no ground, there is sort of all of our economy is right, we are professional people, we are sort of sane and harmonious and, and loving. And, and we have always sort of communicated with them very harmoniously. Even today when they said that we will not give us a child, I told them I'm not angry on you. I understand that you represent a terrible system which is very violent. And this system has to stop. Yes, it has to stop. All it, over Europe, all over Europe, hundreds of thousands of children are being taken from their birth parents, from their biological parents. Because they don't, because the biological parents, for some reason, don't happen to fit the normal structural um, uh, figure that, that is that is applied by the system for normality. So, in other words, you have a kind of Orwellian state in which, if the parents don't actually fit into the little box and and all the little tick boxes that there are to say that they are like everybody else, then they can just take the child away. And where is this going to end? Where is this going to end? Because there is no appeal against such a decision. So I tell you what we are going to do is we're going to try and find a way around this system and go to the European Court of Human Rights and see if there's some way in which we can stop this happening. Because otherwise we're going to end up with a whole state full of children who've been stolen from their parents. And this is terrible. This is wrong. And this is not only being stolen from parents, they also... It, what I am I a gender economy concept author, so if you go on the page gendereconomy.com you'll find the concept of femimasculism, where um, I have my master's degree in economy um, essay uh, from 2004, where I stated the theory that it is not enough with feminism, we need masculism also, that represents the interests of males and uh, that analyzes the power areas of females, the matriarchy, which social security is, it is a total matriarchy, they do, the males they have there are exception and they also are 
are accepted only the ones who preach feminism, of course, and don't know a thing about masculinism and the pain of men and the power areas of women and, and uh, power abuse. Anyway, I, of course, used my um, thesis to inform the ladies in the social security about the areas that they are working, but they didn't like that either. They, they are not used to be um, shown the <coughs> uh, flaws of their system because, of course, they are used to be total and absolute dictators. There is no, no right we have to appeal to their judgment. They have always been able to put their judgment without anybody being able to appeal to it. And this is going to stop. It'll and stop uh, <clears throat> this is uh, a very cruel system and it is not only about these children that are being taken away. If you uh, check other sites, it's also about uh, imposed abortions on young women who social security thinks uh, don't have the right economy, the right experience, the right family sort, the, 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 all sorts of these. And then they sort of help them to do abortions. They sort of uh, really simulate this. And, uh, and this was also part of this decision here, where they attacked Chris, writing a total lie here. They write that Christopher has been uh, uh, helping my daughter to encourage her pregnancy as and, and that we both have thought that her child would help Ruth to become uh, healthy. Well the second part of that is true. The first part of it is false. Nobody encouraged her to have to get pregnant. What happened was that she got pregnant and then you have to decide on what to do. And my, and my decision, or at least my feeling was, and Your what suggestion. I said, my suggestion, yeah, sure, no, my encouragement was that actually she should have the baby. And I think that was right. The baby is a marvellous baby. It's yeah, a fantastic yeah, baby. It was definitely We've seen the right. baby, we've jiggled it about, we've said hello to it, it smiled at us, there are lots of pictures of that and so on. The baby is a quality item. The quality but the, item. But the, but the quality it. item has now been stolen away and hidden. From the family. And here you can see the quality item. Here he is, our beloved grandchild, who has been stolen away from so us. This, th so this little baby I have some sort of moral feeling for, because I did encourage Ruth to have this baby once she was pregnant. Everybody wanted her to have an abortion, including the social services. And I said, no, I don't think so. You should go through with it. And she did go through with it, bless her heart. Yeah. Well, thanks God. Now, now we have this wonderful person. But we can't get him, we can't raise him, we can't uh, cherish him, we can't give him our love. He has been brought to, to some strangers who are getting money for, uh, for um, raising him. Yes. yes. And uh, actually, what I wanted more to say about these abortions is that, uh, yeah, yeah, so they are sort of... Uh, already in the decision writing that she shouldn't have been sort of encouraged to have the baby. No, of course. Imagine, imagine, and they will take care of the baby. Yes, well, this People is, this who is sort a, of thought yeah. that this, this baby should have been aborted. So we have the uniform state. Anyway, I think we said enough. Don't you think we said enough? No. Oh, you want to say more? Oh, yeah. Otherwise, get on and on and on a bit. Give it forward. We've said most of it. It's not about people, it's about me. <clears throat> so what I wanted to say is this, that... Uh, <clears throat> they have written in this decision also that they think that we are overprotective. That is bad. Uh, that we sort of uh, have been talking about mobile phone. Um... Yeah, we have, a full, we have a false view of reality. See, our view of reality is that ionizing radiation from Chernobyl has actually killed people. That's our false view of reality. They actually said that. They specifically said that. 
at one point, but that was a false view of reality. The fact that we have mobile phone towers that are irradiating us or irradiating other people, and we say that that's a danger, is also a false view of reality. Even though the Belgian government has recently banned the sale of mobile phones to children, the Belgian government is actually a government of a, of a population larger than the population of Sweden. And eventually we will find out that the mobile phones are actually killing people and that Chernobyl radiation and Fukushima radiation has killed people and all the rest of it. But these idiots, these people who know nothing at all, feel that they're in a position of power, that they can make decisions about these things which are unassailable. So they can say, these people have a false view of reality. And we take their gonna, baby! We take their baby. Yeah, I sure. <laughs> no, that's it. And there's no appeal. So you, now forget about appealing. You can't, you can't come here and tell us that Chernobyl's killing people because we know that Chernobyl is safe. We know that ionizing radiation is okay and that these mobile phone tires are fantastically fine and no problem with them. Okay? Even though people are dying all over the place, we know that we are right. And there is no appeal. That's the problem. There is no appeal. All of, in all of this, that's the problem. So anyway, we will appeal. We'll find some way around this system and we will appeal. There will be a way. I'll but it will take a lot of time, you know. And our, our little baby will be with strangers and it's first months of its time, of his life, and it's so fragile. He'll be alright. He's a tough guy. But, but, but you see, they're sort of, they're using, really, these... Uh... They're monsters. These people are monsters. They should be locked up. They say they're obeying orders, they're saying, oh, this is the structure, this is the system. They're obeying the law, they, they might they say. They're obeying the law, but if the law told me that I must do something that is wrong, I would refuse. But I, I just must say, there is no such law that they have sort of sure. obeyed to, to not give us the baby. Sure. Well, what they're doing is wrong. And I hope that they will suffer eventually for it. Don't be mean. I don't. I love them too. I'm a very loving person. But uh, <clears throat> this is a heavy abuse. And you have to remember that they are encouraging these young women to kill their babies. They are. And this is a complete system of the destruction of babies and uh, a reduction of love that these babies will get, and security too. Because we, two very mature, very strong individuals, highly educated, we have been standing here for two months just talking to Social Security, begging, almost on our knees, please return our child. And we can't do it. I mean, I, I mean it. I'm so strong, so healthy, so well harmoniously living. And they, they just take your baby and you have no appeal rights. And Chris is Mr. Professor of the health of the world, the expert. They can discharge him as just, you're not fit and I'm not fit. And uh, who is fit, you have to ask. What is this society? This is... I, I have... Well, they told us. They said somebody who thinks like we do. They said that. And that's when you asked them. That's exactly what they said. They said we will bring this child up with somebody who thinks like we do. Yeah, well, they said that, so actually. This is, so, you see, the, my point is this is a political decision. So, in other words, they don't like the way in which we see the world, which is effectively political. So, I mean, for instance, if we're socialists and they're conservatives, they don't like the fact that we're socialists, so they can take our baby. Even communists didn't you know, do this. We're communists and they but are feminists do. You know, or, or we are, or we are Muslims and they are Christians. It's the same sort of thing. They don't, they say we don't like the ways in which you see the world. We're going to give the baby to somebody who sees the world in the way in which we do. Okay, but that's exactly the same as all of the systems throughout the world who persecuted minorities and persecuted other people who didn't think like them. It's a human rights issue. No question about it but a very powerful one, because they steal your baby on the basis that <gasps> My you don't only heir, my only heir they've taken. And there is no, no, no words are enough to describe the sorrow, the depths of the sorrow that I'm going through. It's just beyond words. 
Well, the people who listen to this will understand because there were people who will have had the same thing happen to them. And my feeling is that they should all get together. All of the people to whom this has happened should form an organisation and should march on these people and, and, and utter, utterly overthrow them. For what they're doing is, is evil and bizarre. I have a, a bit different uh, suggestion. We don't have to march. That won't help. They will not uh, sort of um, uh, change anything of that. But we have to create some kind of um, good system that is not evil, that is loving. And where loving people can express their loving nature and uh, where children can be born and there is real money, there are laws that we create ourselves, there are <coughs> judges that we elect ourselves and who respect us and uh, the, the system where we are freeholders, not, not the wage slaves that this society um, praises. Because mainly this is what this is about. This society wants to have simple, obeying citizens who just submit to the laws, even if the laws don't support their best freedom and rights. And we have really to stop submitting to this. Because obviously feminism is worse than communism. And uh, we will not allow any violence of this kind anymore. Thanks for being with us. Pull, pull the plug.